yeah, like the perfect client is like just someone who's physically able to climb up these hills. And I've like, like, I guess in a younger person, you probably they don't have that mental toughness as someone who's had many more like life experiences that you would do with an older person. And I, I had a client uh, on the first hunt this year. He he's from Wyoming. He's an old boy. He's in his sixties, and that guy went with me everywhere. Like it was awesome. And he was extremely mentally tough. That first day we went hiking, and just before we got to where a glasses spot, he just told me after the hunt, he's like, man, I didn't think I was going to make it up there. And I was like, well, you did. And I was like, I didn't know you were feeling that way. And he's like, yeah, you know. And then as the days went on, he just started feeling better about himself. And he's like, he, I was just, I just wanted to do it. And he just kept telling himself, like, you just you just keep going and he yeah I never heard him complain one time like I get guys like that I'll, like if I got guys like that all the time I'd be happy um I, like it depends what like if we're talking about sheep hunts specifically like I had a lot of hunters they bring two like depends what, what kind of hunter they are and if they've been on hunts before if they haven't been on a hunt before like we have a pack list on our website and I would really stick stick by that. Depends what time of year you're coming here. It'll say lightweight sleeping bag. That is like for the actual weight of it. It is not for temperature because you want a minus 18 or a zero degree bag. And um, that comes up a lot of guys don't have a big enough sleeping bag. And then they're in that tent at night and they're like, man, that was cold. I'm like, yeah, it was cold. Um like your number one things you know you don't want to bring too much i i'll give these panniers to a guy i'm like this is your box you know everything you need to bring in the hunt has to go in this box and then you got your backpack you probably want to keep some stuff out of that if you have to ride with it or if you want to put your sitting bag or whatever and then we can put it on top of a horse or something like that but everything's got to fit in that pan they're like everything's got to go in this pan i'm like i'm like yeah they're like okay and then i come back to them an hour later and they're like wow you know everything fit in that panniered you know I, they left like a couple of changes of clothes and whatever out there but you can fit a lot in these panniers but like you typically don't need that much stuff you only need like, like if you're going on horseback kind it's nice to have lots of socks you bring six pairs of socks something like that a couple of changes of underwear a pair of long johns base layers are nice like two shirts two like next to your skin base layer is really nice because then them get they they smell up bad unless you got like good wool they don't smell you know that's fine but you really don't need that much stuff just like your your hunting clothes you're really hunting in the same everywhere like a whole hunt i wear my hike pants all hunt my jacket all hunt my down all hunt you know i i don't even think i changed my base layers this hunt because we, we hunted five days or whatever and um but yeah like base layers all you really need to change your underwear so like you don't need that much stuff and boots you want to have really good boots and you want them boots to be broken and you want to like you don't need to go hiking all the time you just want to make sure the boots fit perfect and they're good you want yeah because that that is one of the tough things that'll ruin your hunt is if you wreck your feet if you've got bad blisters and you can't hike you have to be able to hike so um yeah necessary gear Boots are necessary gear. I would recommend everybody to bring gears and everybody to bring trekking poles. Like, that's kind of the most, like, tools that you use. Gators, boots, trekking poles. You need that stuff. And then good clothing. Um, and, like, you really don't, you don't really need a knife. <laughs> you know, like, I got, I always got a few knives. Like, stuff like that. Like, a med kit, you always want a med kit. Um, like, like, really, you don't, you don't need a whole bunch of stuff med kit binos you don't need a scope i have a scope unless unless you really want to carry one around you don't need one like i always let my hunters want to look through my scope i'm like you look through my scope that's fine not a problem yeah so things to physically train for a sheep hunt um like physically too like you also need to mentally train for one like that's that's a big part of it too uh, if you're coming straight from sea level you know you're gonna be like I don't, I don't come from sea level, like, like, really, my house is, like, the same, this and this, so I don't know, it's, it's easy, if you're 
if you're already at 3,600 feet. But if you're coming from sea level, I don't know if 3,600 feet above sea level will make that much of a difference. It probably will. I don't know if you'll notice it that much, but it'll definitely, you know, you're, you're like, man, I ain't hiking the same as I did. But if you can get up into that, some of that higher country or go somewhere and go hiking, like you don't want to run around your house at sea level, I don't think that's going to do very much for you. But, like, if you can't go hike in the mountains, like, get used to that, climbing up that steep terrain and do it often. Um, even, like, in that, even doing that, physically preparing yourself, you're also mentally preparing yourself because you're like, wow, like, I, I spent two months training and hiking for this. You're, like, you're, you're pumped up. You're like, I can do this, no problem. You know, I'm in good shape. It helps you out mentally. Yeah, so where, where these sheep like to be, they use and rams are different. Ewes really like them nursing hills, especially this time of year. And the rams, they, they like that bluffy stuff, like when there's green patches. And, and they don't need, like, really good water sources. They can find water anywhere. Like, they, they know where the water is on all the mountains because they live here all the time. And, uh, and they start to move later in the season. Like, this year on our hunt, we saw... Like, there was rams moving all over the place. We were seeing them go across freaking, like, valleys, and they're tearing up the country, uh, you know, which is good for hunting and stuff like that. And you, early season when you get rams that aren't, like, it's hot and they're not moving. It's hard. It's, it can be hard to find them. Um, but, yeah, in the winter, I think, like, they really focus on south-facing slopes and stuff with lots and lots of trees because them trees hold a lot of snow, so the snow's not as deep in those spots. You know, that's pretty typical with any animal living in, like, a mountainous area. But, you know, the sheep, there are not much cover out here unless they can find, a, you know, a, a slope with lots of trees on it. But a country like this, there's not much for trees on slopes here. You're, you're really out in the open. And uh, I think they do come lower, but typically, like, there's a lot of wind here. Like, the wind, you get, they'll, they'll be on top of wind swept ridges and stuff like that it's just easier you know and they'll move down and feed in the snow and paw that stuff up but they really they don't want to be caught down in that deep snow because there's wolves here too and then wolves run those those ridges too with no snow on them it's a lot easier for them so they'll they'll get sheep trapped up there too you know with the cold like this time of year they start getting their their high like back in july their their fur is real nice and sleek and and they look a lot thinner when when they really start building their hair up quick and they get nice big white fluffy thick hair on them it, it, it's nice basically what our job is is trying to like just trying to find the old rams and you know and, and there's all kinds of different shapes and horn size of rams and like a lot of the sheep we saw this hunt I've seen old rams that are look the same and they're smaller so even those rams that you think that like there's a lot of rams that we've seen you know, like that looks like a seven or an eight year old ram and then you get you get up there and like if you find those sheep you have to go get on them and, and get an age because there's lots of sheep out there that look like a seven eight year old ram but they're 10 or 11 and they're just short not heavy rams and you know so it all depends, but typically if you have an average ram that's like 10 years old, 12 inch base is 36 inches long, like that's like just a good base average of a doll, then it, it like it's it's easy to tell. I mean like when you see them in a spawning scope and you, you're looking for weight here, you're looking for where their that fourth year ring is dropping below their eye, like that kind of stuff. And then you just, when you see rams like that, you got to get on them and, and age them. And then if it's not, you back off and go find the next one. I think I think the toughest part about sheep hunting in this country, may not be in other countries, but it depends on what the hunting's like that year and what you're seeing for sheep, but it's the day in and day out, 12 days. Like, if you have to go for 12 days straight hiking up mountains, it can be pretty tough. You know, and it depends what your clients like. I had clients before that, no problem. They do that. Some of them even love it, you know. they like, But others, it's like it'll wear on you hard. And you kind of got to pace. You got to 
determine what your hunter's capabilities are and, and really pace them out and like decide like that's how you make your plan too you gotta make your plan according to what your hunter's capable of because like i could do i got a million hikes in mind that like i'd love to, to go on but a lot of some hunters can't do it and that's you know that's fine it's not a problem we could, there's lots of other ways we can hunt this country and, and not you know like hike the crap out of you guys Yeah, like, like I think, like how I react and how hunters react after we've killed something is there's some similarities, but it, I think it's a little bit different too. I mean, like, like, I still have a job to do, and you know the hardest part's over, like finding sheep. But that's the best part. So it's kind of like, like yeah, I want to keep sheep hunting, you know. But like, there's also a stress point where, like, I do stress when if we need, we need to hunt sheep. And if we're not seeing nothing, like I, I start to stress, and then, and then once you find one and you kill one, it's there's that, you just throw that monkey off your back, and like that stress is gone. So and that that's a really good feeling. Um, and I think I think hunters get that same feeling too. You know, like I've, it, it depends on the hunter. Also, I've I've had hunters who, who they don't care. You know, they've if they've shot a couple of sheep or they're just just their their sense of mind and but they're mentally prepared for it i guess you know it's not a big deal i'm not gonna lose my mind or stress over it too much if we don't if we don't get nothing i'm like well, that helps me a lot out too i'm like okay but we're, we're still gonna try really hard you know but that's all you can do is try hard and about other hunters you can start to, you can see it in their face you get to day eight and you ain't seen much yet you're starting to have a, like a low face and you just try and pump them up a little bit and get their spirits high so they can keep going but uh, yeah, we didn't have to do too much of that this time. Yeah, what keeps me coming back is like it's it's fun. I mean, lots of times it's fun. I mean, there's all kinds of different emotions. But uh, my horses keep me coming back. You know, they're a big they're a big part of it. I build relationships with those horses, and. Um, you know it's it's fun running a crew you know you get to work with all these other people and, and i mean it's a lot of work and there's a lot of times where you, you know you get stressed out and you're like man this is this is tough but it is it is awesome like when you get up here and you're and you're finding big rams and everyone else is having a great time hunting um it's awesome and then like man i, I mean a lot of awesome clients who are just fun to be around um and it, you know that also keeps you coming back and you get this like great scenery you know base camp's awesome great food <laughs> and that's nice too so but it really like you know, you're getting paid to hunt you've been paid to take people on and then you know it, at the end of the hunt you do your job you know you find a sheep and stuff like that and you see how happy your clients are and they're just jacked right up you know some of them even cry stuff like that and you're like you just, that feels really good so it's just stuff like that. Oh my gosh. You know, we cook a lot of it. You know, my favorite way to cook sheep meat is a bacon wrap tenderloin. And I mean, we get some really nice thick bacon up here and you wrap that stuff in it over a tenderloin, stick a toothpick on there, throw it in a pan. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's that's some of the best. Or otherwise, just I don't know. I just like pan frying and backstrap, and I don't know. It's just it's all good.